in Nevada before coming to Arizona. Hi, everyone. Mike Page here. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue to bring you feeds from all over the country. So, really, big story of the day uh, was early in the morning, uh, the debate commission putting out a statement saying it's going to go virtual on Thursday. Then moments later, President Trump uh, saying on Fox Business Network saying, you know, if you're going virtual, I'm not going to do a virtual debate. Then uh, President Trump's campaign put out a statement saying, hey, we would like to see the debate just push back by one week. That has since been rejected uh, by the Joe Biden campaign. But let's just show you uh, the President Trump's campaign, uh, 2020 campaign statement that was put out just moments ago saying that the American people should not be deprived of the chance to see the two candidates for president debate face to face two more times just because the Commission on Presidential Debates wants to protect Joe Biden. It remains extremely suspect that the CPD announced the brand new virtual format at 7.30 a.m. Eastern today, immediately after Vice President Mike Pence had just wiped the floor with Senator Kamala Harris. Clearly, the commission wanted to shift attention away from Pence's complete victory. As President Trump said, a virtual debate is a non-starter and would clearly be a gift to Biden because he would be relying on his teleprompter from his basement bunker. Voters should have the opportunity to directly question Biden's 47-year failed record of leadership. We agree that this should happen on October 22nd, and accordingly, the third debate should then be shifted back one week to October 29th. The CPD and the media cannot hide Joe Biden forever. Americans deserve to hear directly from both presidential candidates on these dates, October 22nd, and 29th. That was from the Trump 2020 campaign manager putting out that statement. I want to say again that so far Joe Biden camp rejecting that offer to delay it by one week. I now want to bring in uh, the phone interview that President Trump did on Fox Business Network. We're going to show you just a little bit of it. He made a lot of news in that as he was uh, doing his really his first interview since uh, coming down with this COVID-19 diagnosis. So let's bring that to you right here on News Now. This is from Mornings with Maria on Fox Business Network. Went on the show with Lester Holt. It was like it was meant for a child. It wasn't meant for a, a grown person. Uh, he gets up and he says, we're not fracking. We're not fracking. He was fracking for six months. He was fracking. He was raising his, his very thin hand and he was fracking. And now all of a sudden he's not fracking. Well, tell the Pennsylvania people that you're going, you know, it, it's ridiculous. He said, he's not fracking. That's all he said. And then all of a sudden he goes to a fracking right. mode. And how about her? She committed her life to it. And all of a sudden she's a fracker. She's a big fracker. They're going to stop fracking the minute they get into office. They're lying to everybody. They're lying about so many different things. But you have to confront yeah. people. You can't I do it. I want to talk to you about you. that. I want to talk to you about what you, what you heard last night, but, but Mr. President, you say you're not going to do this debate. Address the criticism, Mr. President, the criticism that you removed your mask for a photo op. Uh, you got to the top of the, the steps. You removed it. People are worried about your recent diagnosis. Now you've got 30-plus people with coronavirus in and around the White House. Address that concern for us, Mr. President. Uh, as you tell the Commission on Debates, you're not going to do this virtually. Yeah, well, first of all, I think I'm better I, when, when to a point where I, I'd love to do a rally tonight. I wanted to do one last night, uh, but I think I'm better to a point that I feel better than I did, uh, you know, I jokingly said 20 years ago. I feel perfect. There's nothing wrong. I had a case. I, do, I got it knocked out. I think it was uh, Regeneron that was responsible for it. Uh, because of that, it was sort of like almost a, a gift from heaven because – because of what I went through, and I had a, you know, I felt pretty lousy. A lot of people did. And a lot of people do. You know, no matter how good the security, you're not going to protect yourself from this thing with just your standard anything, unless you just literally you don't come out. And even those people found out. Did you see in New York City, the most heavily locked down place, the people that caught it the most were the people that were caught in their houses and their apartments, okay? It's, uh, it's one well, of those you know things what? that... Yes, go ahead, Bruce. I'm glad you brought up New York because, uh, Mr. President, I'm glad you brought up New York because yesterday Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, said that the city is going to be on lockdown 
until November 3rd. Not November well, 2nd, November 3rd, which, of course, is well, election day. Well, you're trying to hurt the economy as much as possible, the Democrats. They want a November 3rd because this way they figure the economy will hurt a little bit better. My numbers won't be as good. But actually, our numbers are going to be great. Our numbers for the third quarter are going to be through the roof. Uh, retail sales, uh, employment, uh, all of these numbers are going to be great. So I don't know what they're doing. It's a shame what's happened to New York. It's like a ghost town. It's like a sad, I, I sad go, place, New York. Yeah. So and sad. this is your friends, home. I have I friends mean, living you know, there. They're leaving. New York. Look, I want to go back to, to the coronavirus for a moment because the testing at the White House, I know, is uh, incredible. And everybody gets tested every day. You can't even come in to see you without getting tested. Uh, every precaution was taken to protect you. Anybody who came within feet had to be tested. How is it possible that you did contract the coronavirus? And what kind of protections are you putting in place now? You say you feel great, but the media is out there saying, well, you're contagious. Do you feel that you are? I mean, obviously, you no, I don't think I'm feel contagious, that way if but you're saying you're ready to, to go to a rally. I don't think I'm contagious at all. Well, first of all, if I'm at a rally, I stand by myself very far away from everybody, so whether I was or not. But I, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I still wouldn't go to a rally if I was contagious. But, uh, no, it takes a certain period of time. I feel that I'm... A, I feel that I'm great. You catch this thing. A lot of people caught it. Look, you have the governor of Virginia. He wore a mask all the time. You'd never see the guy without a mask. He catches it. You have uh, senators that wore masks all the time. Tom Tillis, a very good guy who's, I think, now going to win his race because his, apart his uh, opponent happened to have not one affair, but two affairs, okay? That was not good timing. And uh, I think Tom Tillis is going to win his race, and he should win it. He's a good man. But he was known as a mask, Mr. Mask, we call him. He caught it. You catch this thing. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's particles of dust. It's tiny stuff. Now, as far as the White House is concerned, somebody got in. It was a day of celebration with Notre Dame, et cetera, et cetera. Somebody got in, and people got affected, whether it was there or something else. And remember this. When you catch it, you get better. And then you're immune, you know. I, as soon as so how, everything goes away from me, you're me immune. You and, what? It's amazing to me that you're. Tell me, tell me how you felt, what you went through. It's amazing to me that you're back in such strong form right now. How did that happen? You've been talking about Regeneron, Eli Lilly, and Regeneron want FDA approval for emergency use at this point. Are they going to yeah. get it? Are they going to get it? Yeah, they're going to get it. Uh, I, I'm back because I'm a perfect physical specimen, and I'm extremely young, and uh, <laughs> so I'm lucky in that way. Uh, and, and how, you know, seriously, was, what were your I don't have any. I don't have heart problems. I don't have diabetes. I don't have any of the problems that you read about. Perhaps a couple of pounds we could lose here and there, but you know, there's a lot of people in that category. But no, I'm in good health, and I'm, uh, you know, look. What happens is, if you're anywhere around this thing, you can catch it. People caught it, and I'm not just talking about this location. I'm talking about many other locations. Now, what happens is you get better. That's what happens. You get better. Now, we have drugs now that we didn't even know about four months ago, like Regeneron, like, and I'm not even talking about re, Remdesivir. Remdesivir is, you know, it's fine. But, but the Regeneron, was, I, I view it as a cure, not just a therapeutic. I view it as a cure because I took it. And Eli Lilly has a great drug. I spoke to the head of it, David, last night, the company very much along the lines of uh, Regeneron. And they work in a very similar way. It's great. And what I'm doing is I'm going to supply this drug. It made me better, I will tell you right now. I walked in. I didn't feel great. I think I would have done it fine without drugs. You know, you don't really need drugs. And you, they also like to give you steroids, like a steroid combination for a short period of time because that stops the swelling, like a baseball pitcher would use a steroid to, you know, when his arm blows up. They want to stop the swelling of the lungs in particular. And uh, so they gave, they gave me a steroid, which is a very easy thing to take. But, no, I had tremendous well, luck with this Regeneron. And Eli Lilly, I would have had the luck. What I'm doing now, and I don't know if you saw the video I made last night, but I made a video. I put yes, it out. Yes, I did. And you said and it was a blessing they, in disguise. A blessing in disguise. I'm, I'm glad because I'm the leader. 
And I can't be like Biden where I hang out in a basement every day. Sure, if I wanted to hang out in a basement, I wouldn't catch it. But I meet a lot of people, and I have to. I'm the president of the country. I can't hang around in a basement. So I figured there would be a chance that I would catch it. Sometimes I'd be with in groups of, for instance, Gold Star families. I met with Gold Star families. I didn't want to cancel that. But they all came in, and they all talked about their son and daughter and father and and, you know, they all came up to me and they'd tell me a story, Maria. It was really amazing, actually beautiful, but sad. And they'd come up and they'd tell me a story about my son, sir, was in Iraq or he was in Afghanistan. And, sir, he did this and he did that. And then he charged in order to save his friends. And, yes, sir, he was killed, but he saved his friends. He's so brave, sir. And they'd tell me these stories. And I can't say back up, stand 10 feet. You know, I just can't do it. And I went through like 35 people, and everyone had a different story. I could also say, don't tell stories. They're telling the story of their son who, di- who just died, or daughter, right. or husband, who just died in a war, or recently died, you know, usually mostly over the last 10, 12 years, but some very recent. And I can't back up, Marie, and say, give me room. I want room. Give me 12 feet. Stay 12 feet away when you talk. They come, they come within an inch of my face sometimes. They want to hug me and they want to kiss me. Then they do. And frankly, I'm not telling them to back up. I'm not doing it. But I did say it's like, you know, it's, it's obviously dangerous. It's a dangerous thing, I guess, if you go by the, the COVID thing. But I, I figured, yeah. look, I look at the numbers. I figured that, you prob- that probably at some point I'd catch it and I'll get better. That's what happened. I've caught it. I could have been out of the hospital in one day. I had the Regeneron. Mm. Now, I don't know what would happen without the Regeneron. All I know is I had it, and I was better within 24 hours. I felt perfect. I feel perfect now, Maria. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to speak to you. And, and, and you are back in it, sort of knee-deep in work again. I want to ask you about yeah, the stimulus Yeah, I, I was plan, yesterday and the day before because... the day before that. I worked from the hospital. I worked a full schedule. I missed very well, little time. Well, you're calling for aid now. You want aid for the airlines, for small business, $1,200 checks. Uh, but you just said that you were shutting down talks with Nancy Pelosi. How do you want to see aid play out? And what do you want as far as a priority on stimulus? Well, I shut down talks two days ago because they weren't working out. Now they are starting to work out. We're starting to have some very productive talks. And she wants to happen, too. She doesn't want it not to happen. I believe she wants, to ha- wants it to happen because it's, it's so good for our country. We really need it. It wasn't our workers' fault. It wasn't our airlines' fault that China did this terrible thing to us, and I will not be forgetting about that. China did this. This was all done by China. And we shouldn't be hurting our workers because China put the curse on, because this was a, a horrible scourge, a horrible, horrible thing that they did. And... So I said, uh, I said, look, we're not getting anywhere. Shut it down. And I'm willing to, I didn't want to waste time. But in any event, after that, we got back. You know, both sides very capable. We got back. We started talking again. And we're talking about airlines. And we're talking about uh, a bigger deal than airlines. We're talking about a deal with $1,200 per person. We're talking about other things. But it's not anybody's so you- fault. 